What's up, YouTube? EP's out sick today, so we had to bring in reinforcements. Dad's taking his spot tonight. Uh, but this week, episode five, and we're going to talk about um, what's the best time to turkey hunt throughout the course of the day. You know, last week we did we did tips and tricks um, about hunting public land, and we're going to build off of some of those things today. You know, one of the tips that we had on there last week was get to your spot early to claim your spot, but then stay late through the day. Dad, um, I know this is something that we see all the time because we do hunt quite a bit of public land, um, but you got you know, like, when we are there and we spend our time, I'd say probably the number one reason why people, hunters go unsuccessful is because they're not staying the full time that they have the potential to hunt. What do you think? That is correct. Um... A lot of them get frustrated in the morning because they fly down, they don't hear no more gobbles. And, um, you know, all you gotta do is put in the time and you can find those birds. They're gonna be somewhere that did not disappear. Right, you can so, always yeah. always try and relocate. And, right. you know, I mean, you know, I said the other day, the roost is awesome because they gobble mm -hmm. a lot, right? I mean, it's just bred into them that time of year. And that's something I kind of want to mention about locator calls. Um, hunting public ground, what do you see a lot of with people using locator calls first thing in the morning? Well, it's not very successful. They they start off with a hoot owl and then they start crowing and they're just walking through the woods and they're busting the birds out. Right. So. And hitting, you know, they'll hit a, yeah. a woodpecker call or a coyote yeah. howler. Um, guys, that's, that's, that's not good. And it is genetically bred into that species that time of year they were going to gobble on the limb and now there are factors that are going to go into that weather barometric pressure right yeah. um is going to affect how that bird gobbles in the morning but most times if, if you're getting up and it's going to be a good day uh clear bluebird skies those turkeys are going to wake up and more than likely going to gobble and we hear people come down the road, you hear the car door shut, and then they instantly start slamming some hoot owl call. Hoot owl or crow. So a locator call, in my opinion, the best time to use a locator call is in these midday hunts to try and strike birds throughout the day. Now that could be using a kiki, key because key, it's a high frequency turkey call, crow calls, um, and you know, there are owls that, that will hit through the day. They don't just, they're not, yes, they're nocturnal animals, but owls can hoot through the day. And that's something that you can do, or even hit a coyote howl. You know, I mean, we were hunting a couple years ago and we had a, a pack of coyotes light up, uh, what, about nine o'clock? Yeah, about nine. And I think every turkey in the, yes. in the Tri-County area <laughs> gobbled, gobbled. At, gobbled at that coyote. Um, so... Let's get back now, though. So, so now that we've touched on, you know, using that locator call at the proper time through the day, what do you think your favorite time is to hunt? Well, I've been more successful because, you know, the boys touched on it last week. I usually miss first thing in the morning. So I usually kill all of my birds after 10 o'clock in the morning. So um, the afternoon is good for me. I like the afternoon. Um, because those birds are going to be going back to nest. Uh, if you if you take and pattern your birds, if you go out there and you do your homework before season, you'll know which way the birds should be going back to roost. So yeah, and, I, and and we talked last week, you know, or we mentioned, you know, these birds are patternable patternable that time of the year, and if if you've worked in that morning generally he's going to come back and roost in that same general location unless something's messed up his pattern um you know it it just it just gets better as the day goes on and this is people always ask me why do you like turkey hunting better than deer hunting and this is the reason why i mean in the rut you know and de depending on the moon phase you know deer may move middle of the day or you know two o'clock in the afternoon or something like that but in the spring turkey hunting Turkeys are vocal all day long, and, and they just, it's, the hunting just gets better throughout the day. So even if the morning don't go well, 
the hunt's not over because you've got you've got all day to do it. Well, they are they're not going to gobble as much through the middle of the day or in the afternoon, but you've got better chance of getting that bird to respond to you and come to you even though he ain't gobbling than you do in the morning off the limb. Not gobbling as much. He's not gobbling as much because in the morning on the limb, he's got, you know, he's got his hands and when they hit the ground, he's gonna go to them. Yeah, so. and I think, you know, if for an example, you know, our South Dakota hunts, um, the last two years out of the four of us there, we've killed eight birds in the last two years. And there hasn't been one single bird killed before 11 o'clock. At yeah. 11 a.m. Yeah. Um, in the last two years, and you know that's that's four guys killing eight birds in a three-day hunt. So I mean that's really smacking some birds down later in the day. And that right there, I think that's just a proven, just a proven scenario that you know it's not over until it's over. And you know, like I said, uh, we don't give up. We you know, we keep hunting. You can't be with somebody that's going to go out, get out of their car, go out and set for an hour or two in the mornings and hear them gobbling on the limbs and then get frustrated and go home. Or if it starts raining, you go home. What do you do when it starts raining? You know, the birds is usually going to go to an open field so they can see the coyotes coming after them or whatever because they can't here is good in the woods. So go find the edge of a field and hunt that field, even though it's raining. And that, you know, that all goes back to patterning your birds and doing your homework. Um, but once that, once that first initial fly down, you know, generally, you know, he's going to gobble several times before he hits the ground. And when he's doing that, you know, that's kind of an indic indicator to his hands that he's coming down out of the tree. Typically, you know, they're going to roost with hens. They're going to pitch down with those hands, and when he pitches down with those hands, he doesn't have to gobble then. So once he's with those hands, he's going to go through his cycle. You know, he's going to go through, he's going to stand out there, he's going to strut, he's going to display himself, and those hands are going to, you know, be all around him. And um, once once they're bred, though, what time? 8, 8.30? 8 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock, those hands are going to go to nest. And they're going to go, you know, sit their sit on their nest, do what they do, and you'll see them. Like we've seen this multiple times. And when they go, I mean, they just flat leave him, and and they're they're going straight to their nesting area. And, and he, he gets really lonely. Yep, and he's going to be lonely, <laughs> even if he's got other other males with him, Jake's other other long beards. You know, they're looking at that time of the year. They're looking for hens, and not eight thirty nine o'clock. You can strike him up. And typically, you know, we, our motto is if we can get one fired up in, after nine o'clock, most generally we can kill him. That's right. As long as we can get, you know, as long as our setup's right. As long as we can hit him. And we can hit him. <laughs> um, we can usually kill that bird. And like I said, you know, it's just been proven time and time again. And I can think two years ago, public land, um, I had I had a bird or I went out that morning and right off the roost nothing I never heard one gobble and it was a beautiful bluebird day they should have been they should have been gobbling that morning never gobbled one time I was by myself at 7:30 I had to leave to take my daughter to church I believe and um, it may have been school because it was that early so I ran home picked her up took her and dropped her off and when I as soon as I left there. I went to another pool off on on the same public land and I struck a bird at 8.30 in the morning and I ended up killing that bird at 10.30. It took me two hours, but he gobbled the entire time and he ended up being a big three-year-old bird on uh, actually the longest beard I've ever killed on a bird. But most hunters, I think if they were in that scenario, it was late season, they went out, not heard a bird gobble off the limb and that's frustrating, disappointing. You know, that's a slap on the face to hunter. You're and like, that's, and that's probably because we're hunting public. And it could be. You know, because every morning for the last two months, they've been getting hammered by every high school kid and before school, and you know, calling to them. And through so, the season, and yeah. and you know, I think most people would have gave up. They would have just said, you know what, birds aren't working today, and went home. And it's just, it's just in my blood. Like I can't quit. You know, and so. I went back, 
like I said, struck him up and ended up killing him later on that after later on that morning. So um, it's it's a killer tactic. Don't give up. There are ways to kill time out there, and you know if you're just hanging out and you're waiting to to hear one gobble. And the thing is, is some guys will say, "Well, we'll we'll leave and go get breakfast," but then you don't know what you're missing. You know, you don't know you don't know what's what's happened in that time. He's might have gobbled and given away his location or whatever while you're at the corner store getting a sausage biscuit, and uh, you've missed that that first gobble, and he may you know have found another hen between there and there. Right. So um don't don't leave you know pack pack a granola bar we always pack water um right. i'm typically on my phone checking emails or something like that if if they're not goblin i'm just sitting there at the base of the tree you know waiting for something to, to to spout off so remember your locator calls keep them in your vest until a little bit later in the morning through midday don't quit Stay out there, hunt daylight to dark if you can. If you can't, hunt till the end of that legal hunting time. Like I said, in some public, some public land, it's going to change. So be careful and make sure you know your, your regulations in those different parks and areas like that. All right, Dad, so to recap, if we think about this as, as a day clock, we're gonna start with the roost first thing in the morning, and those birds are gonna gobble. They're gonna hit the ground, they're gonna gobble for a little bit, and then they're gonna kind of probably shut down typically on a normal day. What time do you think they're gonna shut down? Yeah, uh, they'll shut down by probably 7.30. 7.30, 8-ish? Yeah. Okay. And then there's gonna be that time period when they're with their hens. Right. And they're gonna be doing their thing, going through the mating cycle, um, breeding, and once, once those hens are bred, Going, going back to nest, yeah, right? So yeah. we're, we re recap that. And we talked about, you know, being able to strike that bird, 9.30, 10 o'clock yeah. is good. Yes. Um, and then noon, I mean. Noon's really good. I've killed a lot of birds right at noon. Yeah. I mean, right at noon. And if you're hunting the public land and you have to be out by noon or, or one o'clock, it's one o'clock now. It used to be noon, but for for us here, yes. here locally, um, not everywhere. It, um, you know, you had to be out by one o'clock. I mean, you you was really struggling like at noon to get that bird killed. So yeah, and was, EP made that comment last week. You know, he yeah. said I've killed a lot of birds around noon, and you know, and it seems like, and th this is the stuff, the the data that we've gathered over the years. You know, nine to ten thirty is really good. Yes, noon is really good. And noon then, to one noon to one and then there's like that break and it seems like 2 30 ish 2 yeah. 2 30 ish it turns back on and those birds will fire back up for some reason i mean yeah. i know we've lit a lot of birds up around that that 2 30 time yes um and then you start then you break into those full afternoon hunts and i know right. you hunt the afternoon a lot a lot after work you, yes. you know, almost every day yeah, he's hitting the woods. I'm, I'm hitting the woods right after work. I mean, I come out of the building and camouflage, and I'm gone. So yeah, so <laughs> um, it in you've had success with that. Yeah, late I, in the day, about four thirty, five o'clock around in there, you can get them lit up again before they're heading back to the tree. Yep. I mean, they they will really light up, and you can usually if you like I said, you do your homework. We've talked about this. You know basically where they're going should be going back to roost and i try to get myself between them and that area and then if i get one fired up i can kill that bird yeah and you know i know youth hunts you've killed a lot of birds a lot of birds in the afternoon in the evening well in that yeah. evening late afternoon um and then you know once that kind of shuts down they're they're going to kind of shut down a little bit later you know mm -hmm. and right before dark sometimes they're going to gobble to kind of round up those hens a little bit and so you want to be there then to know where he's flying up where's he going to be roosted at in the morning and so then the next morning uh hopefully you guys you can slip in there and you, you'll have a good start for the following day so you know if you look at it and break it down by the clock you know the roost is good 9 30 to 10 30 is good, good. 11 30 to noon yeah killer Again, two to two thirty. There's. It seems like they're gonna fire back up. Um, 
four thirty to five. They're far back up ten, again. Tends to be another yeah. gobbling cycle there, and then, like I said, they're going to be shutting down kind of you know later in the evening, and then rounding up those hens and going up to roost. Yes. So that is good. that's kind of that's kind of how we base our days and and we kind of plan our striking times you know like we we know this so now like when, instead of just walking through the woods and randomly calling trying to fire a bird every two seconds we'll let it calm and then we're like all right it should be about that time and then that's when we're going to start trying to start strike hit another call yeah trying to strike those birds so, and and when you go to do that you don't want to start off with a big loud box call or something like that or even a locator you can just do a soft yelp and the and, and, and something's you can close get, yeah if something's close you'll you might they'll far up um you know and then you'll hit it a little bit harder a little bit later on you know but you just don't start blasting with a with a friction call right off yeah i mean you want to start low and you don't want to blow something's ears off its head if it's if it's worked its way in because yeah. it's heard you calling earlier that morning or you know, if you've done your homework and you're kind of sitting in that that general path of where they like to move, so that is something to keep in mind. That's a good point. So, um, so anyway, hopefully you guys learned something this week. Uh, like I said, stay in tune. Hit that su subscribe button. Helps us out a ton and supports the channel, and so we can keep doing this. Uh, we've got a lot of cool content um, lined up still all the way through May. So remember. Put your next long beard on speed dial with a spring fever custom call. Catch you guys next week. See ya.